I'm actually really talking today on behalf of the um, Grains uh, NTM project and um, uh, as part of that steer well, project manager for that steering committee. And really this was a bit of a landmark report for, um, for the sector and um, what I'd like to do is just try and share some of our findings with you. Um, so we've heard a bit, uh, quite a bit over the last couple of days about how the, um, uh, the uh, trade policy environment is changing. And certainly uh, yesterday, um, I think, you know, a, a couple of talks in the morning uh, spoke very much about you know, how, the, how we've really moved, I guess, from trying to reform the whole trade environment to um, around tariffs uh, with free trade agreements, whether bilateral or, or multilateral, have um, reduced the, the emphasis on tariffs and, and some of the policy environments moved to, some, to other um, aspects that have caused um, more problems. And we talked yesterday, they talked yesterday about uh, the influence of um, domestic support policies, and that's certainly a key issue for the grains industry and something where we have seen some NTMs develop. Um, so I guess for the grains industry, we've certainly seen tariffs reduce, um, and for our industry, um, really tariffs is, uh, it's, they're still important in some markets, but in terms of the, uh, the, uh, pro the trade policy issues that are giving out our, our, our industry, um, or restricting trade in our industry today, it's, it's shifted much more to the NTMs. I put that little box up there about FTAs. I want to come back to that. Um, certainly, you know, our government at the moment has a very strong emphasis around FTA, FTA negotiations, and we do see FTAs as one way or one element that we can use or one tool we can use to um, address the NTMs. Don touched on this issue about are NTMs legitimate or not. And I think our, the bottom line for really for us is that even though sometimes NTMs can be legitimate in, what, in trying to um, protect either human health or plants, plant health or environment, they can also have um, adverse consequences for trade. In other cases, they are just not legitimate <laughs> in our view. Um, so I think we've got to deal with both of those things in a, in a little bit of a different, different way. Um, so what I'd like to do is just before I move on to the NTM project and the, and the findings is just uh, give you a little snapshot about the Australian grain trade. Um, we are a trade exposed sector and our trade has certainly been shifting to Asia. And we heard about that yesterday, um, the shift to Asia and you know, I think the question was asked, um, are we putting all our eggs in one basket? Really for, for the grains industry, if you look at where demand's going to be in the future, um, Asia, is, Asia is where we're playing. Um, so we are one of agriculture's most important um, industries. As I said, we are a very trade exposed sector, while in, uh, in total we export around about 75% of our product. In some states that can be much higher. So for example, in Western Australia, it's really around 90% of our trade. So our industry is very trade exposed and therefore market access um, is very, very critical to us. Um, the shift to Asia has really been a combination of a couple of things. Um, you can see there on the, on the slide, um, our traditional markets of the Middle East for our traditional commodities of wheat and barley have moved very much to Asia, but also we've had growth in a lot of our smaller crops like canola and pulses, and really their core markets are in Asia, including Asia and the, and the subcontinent. We also heard yesterday about the importance of China and India, and definitely for the grains industry, that's been the play over the last uh, you know, decade or five to ten years. Um, we've certainly, um, obviously we have a tra free, free trade agreement with China and certainly our, our um, product, our um, trade into China has expanded on the, on the back of that and, and just for changes in the um, Chinese market that as, um, we heard this morning in, in the policy section. Um, also to India, you can see there, um, whilst obviously India is a very core market for our pulse crops, um, we also see opportunistic opportunities there for um, uh, some of our other products and certainly for wheat um, in the 2016-17 year, it was a very key market. So those two markets are very important to us. They have delivered value back to the industry, but they do also have some um, increased risk, risk profiles for the industry as well. So turning on to the core of the project of this um, talk in terms of the Grains MTM project, um, I guess as I said, this really was a landmark um, sector report for the sector. It really was the first time that we've done a comprehensive look at trying to catalogue all of the NTMs that um, impact on the grains industry and importantly to understand where the impacts of those are falling and to prioritise them. So our objectives in doing this was to um, improve the transparency and we heard a lot about that yesterday in transparency. Um, so improve the transparency by understanding from exporters where the NTMs are impacting 
and what it means for individual businesses as well as our industry as in total. And I guess through that to provide a better line of sight to the breadth and nature of the NTMs impacting on the industry. And really that's important for us as an industry so that we can utilise that knowledge to better inform policy and interactions with government. And I think the Senator this morning was talking about the need for industry to communicate to the government what our issues are and that's certainly been a key driver of this project is as an industry we, so we can communicate um, where our priorities are and what we would like the government to do about that. And I think you know, one of the messages I'll come back to in the end is that if we're going to address NTMs, it has to be industry and government working together. It can't just be industry on its own. Um, so we did do a major ga data gathering exercise. We also did a major survey of exporters and industry organisations um, to try and identify the NTMs. And you can see there in that box, um, the scope was pretty broad at the end. I think it probably even <laughs> gave us a bit of a surprise. So I think in total, we, uh, we identified 54 separate NTMs impacting across 15 markets and within those 15 markets, they really included a lot of our core markets that we, we trade mostly with. Um, the next few slides will just give you a bit more visibility around the, the outcomes that, of the report. So if we look first in terms of the um, NTMs by commodity, um, really this is just the number of NTMs identified by commodity as a percentage of the total. And really, doesn't, no, shouldn't be any surprises here. Obviously, um, wheat, barley and canola are our three major export crops. And um, with no surprise, uh, that's where the greatest number of NTMs are. But I think importantly for, again, for you know, policymakers, you can't ignore the small, um, the crops that might only show one, one NTM. But if that one NTM is in that crop's major market, um, it can impact on nearly all of the trade and put all of that trade at risk. And we saw that with cotton seed, um, with an issue that we had into China last year. Um, that, that really, really um, where that market represents the bulk of that commodities trade, it can really put at risk. So we can't just look at numbers in total, we've got to look at the impacts on, um, by, on a crop by crop basis. Um, Don spoke a little bit about the Young Tad um, classification. And again, if you look at um, our NTMs in terms of the, um, the classification, you can see that we are very strongly focused in that um, category A. SPS, so the sanitary and phytosanitary um, elements, and in the um, B category, which is the technical barriers to trade. And within those, so A, the A and B categories are essentially all about protecting uh, consumer, um, animal or plant health, and environment health. But some of the things that really have the greatest impact is it also picks up those um, measures that are related to. Um, uh, the conformity assessment, if you like, so the certification, the testing, the inspection and the quarantine. And I think Don raised the issues around you know, harmonisation of sampling and testing. And just certainly for the grains industry, that is one of our greatest um, uh, challenges and something that we've been trying to work on, um, not only uh, domestically or with our own, own governments, but um, on a regional basis through um, uh, uh, um, uh, con um, organisations like APEC and others. So it's something that's uh, it's going to take a long time to address, but something that we need to do. And the other issue around the uh, TBTs, the technical barriers to trade, one of the, some of the key issues there really relate to transparency around regulations and the implementation of those, sometimes with no consultation and no warning. And again, we saw that with our um, pulses into India um, recently in December. and and subsequently with some other changes. So if we break this down a little bit more um, into uh, what, does it, what does that really mean for, for industry, we, if you like, we put our own classification on top of the <laughs> UNCTAD classification. So the right hand side is sort of breaking, our uh, graph is breaking up that dark green A box and the, uh, the graph on the left hand side is breaking up the, the B, B box. And you can see that um, in that, that uh, you know, the biggest categories for us in the A boxes are um, MRLs and disease, pests and weeds. And this is really all about food safety. And I think you know, we heard yesterday the statistic that two thirds of the world are concerned about food safety and environment. And that's certainly something that we can see um, within the markets that, that we trade. MRLs are a specific problem for the grains industry, and I'm sure it's for every other com agricultural commodity as well. Um, and this is again, I think um, they were talking in the session this morning 
um, about you know, how one market might set standards and that flows on into other, other markets. And we've certainly seen that with MRLs. So things like countries like Japan who have put in their positive list system, um, that's flowed on to other markets and, and um, really causing some <laughs> tightening of the MRLs across all, a lot of our trading markets. But the MRL issue is quite complex um, and it's really something that we have to tackle globally. We, can't, it's, um, we can do some things ourselves but it's uh, very much a global industry and the grains industry does work globally within the National Grain Trade Coalition on MRLs. So we have issues around missing MRLs, we have um, lack of default policies, um, we have tightening MRLs. So it's a very complex area and something that's going to take a, a long time probably to, to address. Um, in terms of the seas, pests and weeds, we've seen a number of these issues arise for us um, in a number of our markets um, over recent years. And I guess this is where it becomes a bit challenging as to whether those are legitimate or not. And we would argue that in some cases they are not legitimate because the country that's imposing the restriction, like India on ergot, already has that um, pest or that um, disease present in its marketplace. So again, it's quite complex and, as Louise said, quite opaque sometimes in, in the impacts of, of um, these things. In terms of the uh, technical barriers to trade, um, again, we had a lot of discussion this morning about um, domestic support policies and protecting their um, countries, protecting their own industries. And this is certainly something that's causing us some issues around, um, I guess, new access or, um, for, or expanded access for some of our products. And particularly in Southeast Asia, we're certainly seeing um, instances where markets are trying to protect their own domestic um, production, particularly corn. Um, and recently, you know, Thailand put in place a restriction where uh, importer has to import on a three to one, has to buy domestic corn on a three to one ratio if they want to import uh, uh, feed, feed wheat. So we're seeing a lot of these things emerge um, across those markets and, and um, transparency is often the, the issue around these. So I guess then more looking at um, the impact of these thing, of, um, of the NTMs um, and, oh, it's the old, <laughs> old presentation, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so I guess they're quite, uh, the, um, the impacts can be quite, quite, uh, quite broad, but really a lot of it actually um, centres around um, increasing the operational and commercial risk for exporters. So a lot of the um, barriers that we're facing, a lot of the MTMs that the grains industry is facing, is really causing a lot higher compliance costs for the industry, um, and certainly a lot higher com compliance risk. And, and sometimes you know, these NTMs, you're not, um, you know, your, your product gets to destination before the, before the NTM or before the um, restriction is, is, is notified. And so obviously there's costs around that. But um, because of lack of transparency around some of these things, um, and particularly where you're talking about lack of harmonisation on sampling and testing, the risk of um, something being approved to leave at origin, but um, hitting problems at destination and certainly incur incurs risk um, to, to the exporters. In other cases, it um, incurs quite a lot of higher compliance costs. So in mar some markets we have specialist um, protocols and industry management plans, which require the industry to do a lot higher um, uh, supply chain selection to actually meet those market requirements. So it's adding costs um, through, through the supply chain. The risk of a trade ban or restriction is also um, something that's a very high impact for the industry. Um, and you know, I guess one that you would have seen about in the media over the uh, last few years is uh, China and, and Black Leg. Um, that was initially a, a, a trade ban. Our trade stopped for a short time. The trade then reopened, but has reopened with um, certain restrictions in terms of ports that we can, we can export from. So the impact can be quite significant of, of these um, of these risks. But I guess more concerning for the industry is perhaps some of the longer term implications of some of these NTMs. So we do see that with um, the breadth of the NTMs we have, one of the uh, potential longer term impacts for the industry is a lack of confidence to invest. And that's not just through the supply chain, but also at production capacity. So we certainly see it as a very high priority to, to address these, um, these NTMs. I won't spend much time on this. We heard uh, um, yesterday, as I said, about the uh, two-thirds of the world concerned about food safety and environment. 
We're certainly seeing a lot of emerging issues. Food safety is not really emerging for us. It's been there for a long time, but it's certainly growing in, you know, it's been growing importance. But things like biotechnology and sustainability are certainly um, emerging challenges. Again, these are ones where we work globally to try and address these. Um, and certainly in sustainability um, for all, um, our canola industry, it's, it's very real in terms of meeting the EU sustainability requirements. But in a broader perspective, I think the problem that we, we want to avoid is not having um, every individual market putting their own sustainability requirements in and then we're having to meet um, multiple certification systems because all of that adds cost to the industry. So that was a quick um, summary of the, uh, the, of the uh, findings of the report. I guess more importantly, I also, also just want to talk a little bit about um, what we can do about these uh, NTMs. And as I said, really, um, it has to be government and industry working together. And I think we certainly support the comments of the Senator made this morning that industry has to communicate to government their priorities and then we have to collectively put strategies together to try and address that. So the trade market access space is um, quite, a, quite a big investment for the grains industry. We work across a whole range of elements um, in terms of trying to address not just NTMs, but tariffs and all the other trade policy issues that are out there. Um, but as I said, one of the points I'd like to leave is that you know, we can't just work within our own uh, market. We have to deal with some of these things globally. We're fortunate in the grains industry, we do have some good structures at an industry level through the International Grain Trade Coalition to address some of these things. But we also have to be active in our own markets as well, helping the governments helping our governments um, with some industry push and pull in, the, in those markets. Um, we also, as an industry, have to be um, very proactive in providing support to the government in terms of um, some of the negotiations that they're doing and providing that technical support, and that's certainly something as an industry we try to do very hard. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that um, FTAs are, are one tool that we can use to um, to address NTMs, and they are only one tool, but uh, you know they are an important tool. And again, when I'm talking about FTAs, I'm talking about bilateral agreements and, and multilateral agreements. But the industry has been proactive in trying to put together a set of disciplines that we can utilise as um, part of uh, free trade negotiations. And those elements on the right-hand side of the slide are the um, Sorts of uh, sort of summarise the, the um, elements that we have in um, in the disciplines that we're putting together to try and address some of these uh, um, NTMs, and really, I, I guess for a, a high priority one that I've already mentioned there is is in the um, sampling and testing um, uh, protocols and also thresholds. So in a lot of cases, um, uh, and particularly when we're talking things like biotechnology um, and plant innovation policies. Um, setting realistic thresholds is a very important uh, uh, issue for the industry. So we, you know, we can use that set of disciplines across a whole range of uh, FTA negotiations that um, we're having. In terms of um, addressing the solutions, um, there's sort of four key elements um, that you know, the industry has been working on. And well, the first one is around transparency. And we've heard a lot about transparency over the last couple of days. And uh, certainly for the industry, this report is, that we've just completed is a very key piece of work in helping us understand the impacts and, and um, in industry perceptions and reality about where the, where the burdens fall from some of these NTMs, so that again we can use that in a, in a dialogue and a discussion with, with government. Supporting that is communication, very, very important. And again, a lot of these things are market sensitive, so we have to be sensitive about our communications. But we have to communicate within our industry, with our government, and as I said, importantly, with our markets as well. Um, we're also working quite hard in terms of trying to put some numbers around these things and quantify the impact of these uh, NTMs. But I guess most importantly is that we won't get any resolution to these uh, um, NTMs unless we can demonstrate benefits for both ourselves and our, our trading partners. So I think we've got to be realistic that when we're in, um, looking at solutions to these NTMs, we have to look at it from our trading partners' perspective as well as our perspective and try and um, identify uh, solutions that will actually give us give some benefit back uh, to, to both parties. So um, 
just in terms of uh, you know where we go from here, um, this is a uh, um, it is an ongoing issue. The grains industry has recognised the need to increase the resources that it allocates to trade and market access activities. Um, those the three logos at the bottom there are the three industry bodies that are involved in this space and work very closely together. And the grains in this grains in ten project that we just completed is a very important piece of work to help prioritise and develop the industry's work plan. Um, this presentation is, has focused on NTMs as the new market challenge for the industry, and it certainly is one that we're trying, uh, that is our top of mind uh, challenge at the moment. You know, NTMs are certainly increasing, and today they are our priority trade policy issue. I think not just for industry, but also for government. Um, as I said, FTA, FTAs are one opportunity we have to address NTMs, and the industry needs to be very proactive in providing the big ticket items that it wants for inclusion in, in those FTA discussions. The market access challenge is ongoing and requires government and industry working together to address the current and future challenges. This project has been a joint initiative for the government and industry and demonstrates the value that can be captured by that activity and from working together in, in, in that area. So the message I guess I'd like to leave you with is that addressing NTMs provides the greatest opportunity for the industry to increase trade and deliver value back to the industry growers and the economy. So it is our, I guess, our number one trade policy um, issue today. Thanks.